I'm Tiffany Gladney with your weekly legislative update for child advocates. The General Assembly released its highly anticipated 2022 technical corrections bill this week. Spoiler alert. The budget does not include Medicaid expansion. However, the House passed its own version of a plan to eventually expand Medicaid Tuesday. But for those of you keeping score, there are now not one, but two Republican-led Medicaid expansion bills under consideration. The Senate passed its Medicaid expansion bill last week, but the two bills are wildly different. Will the House and Senate agree to a compromise? Will the legislature return to expand Medicaid in a special session? You'll have to tune in to our next exciting episode to learn the answers to all of these questions and more. Also, this week, the North Carolina DHHS Secretary Cody Kinsley was confirmed by a unanimous vote in the Senate. He's been acting in the capacity of secretary since December of 2021. Leaders in both the House and Senate have made it clear that this is the last week of session. However, a joint resolution released Thursday shows that the Senate will adjourn today, July 1st, only to reconvene at various times in the summer and fall to take up remaining business. The House's resolution details that they will adjourn July 15th and return August 12th and continue handling unfinished business throughout the fall. So let's talk about the budget, right? So House Bill 103, the 2022 Current Appropriations Act. Both the House and Senate passed the budget for the fiscal year 2022-2023 on Thursday night. It's now on its way to the governor for his consideration. And NC Child is working on an analysis of select provisions in the 2022 budget. You can find our most current version in your legislative update email. We'll have more complete information available for you next week after the legislative session is expected to adjourn. And while Medicaid expansion was not included, we are really proud to report that several of our other priorities and partners priorities were included. Notably, merging the North Carolina Medicaid and the North Carolina Health Choice CHIP programs a temporary increase in the child care subsidy rate to the 2018 market rate, and also an increase to North Carolina pre-K rates. But there were several other bills that moved uh, this week as well. So on the health front, we saw Senate Bill 408. Republican leaders in the House filed and passed their version of Medicaid expansion this week. And to be clear, this bill does not expand Medicaid but it does create a pathway. Key provisions include add Medicaid coverage for adults aged 18 to 64 with incomes up to 133% of the federal poverty level, beginning on a date to be proposed by the Secretary of DHHS, Cody Kinsley. It also seeks to increase hospital assessments to pay the non-federal share of an increase to Medicaid hospital reimbursements through the Hospital Access and Stabilization Program, also known as the HASP. This bill also directs the Secretary of Commerce to collaborate with identified stakeholders to develop a plan for a comprehensive workforce development program. This bill passed both the House Rules Committee and the full House of Representatives Tuesday, June 28th, and is now in the Senate for consideration. Other bills of interest. House Bill 823 would establish criteria for children's advocacy centers to receive state funds. The bill would establish certain requirements for the sharing of information and records held by the children's advocacy centers and multidisciplinary teams and would establish immunity from civil liability for individuals working for a children's advocacy center. After stalling in 2021, this week the bill passed the Senate and is scheduled for a full vote in the House today. Then there's House Bill 791, the Licensed Counselors Interstate Compact. It's a bipartisan bill that stalled last session as well but this bill would make North Carolina a member of the Counseling Compact, which would allow 
uh, licensed professional counselors to practice in North Carolina virtually and would also appropriate funds for administrative costs. The bill passed the Senate and is also on the calendar for a full vote in the House today. Then there's Senate Bill 101. This is a controversial immigration bill that passed the Senate in March of 2021. Provisions within the bill include creating a reporting requirement system related to ICE queries, require local sheriff's departments to consult ICE when an individual charged with certain offenses is in custody and their citizenship status is in question, and also require local judicial officers to hold the suspect in its local facility for 48 hours or until ICE resolves the immigration status inquiry. And y'all, this was not it. There is a lot of activity federally as well. We saw the Safer Communities Act get signed into law by President Biden last Saturday. And this is the first major federal gun safety legislation passed in decades, marking a significant part bipartisan breakthrough. Senators Tillis and Burr were among the 15 Republicans who crossed the aisle to enact this compromise legislation. Senator Tillis played a key role in the negotiations. So be sure to take a moment to send him a thank you. And then there was the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. This bill would ensure that pregnant workers receive workplace accommodations when they need them by requiring employers to make the same sorts of accommodations for pregnancy, childbirth, and related medical conditions that the Americans with Disability Act requires employees, employers, excuse me, to make for workers with disabilities. This legislation has passed the House as well as the, a key Senate committee and it is being held up in the Senate under um, an outdated law or an outdated rule, I should say. So take a moment to reach out to Senator Burr to say thank you for his work to ensure pregnant and postpartum workers get stronger legal protections in the workplace and urge him to help bring the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act to a vote in the full Senate. And then there's CAPTA. So Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina is asking for your support and thanking Senator Byrne and Representative Fox for their support of CAPTA, which is Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act. So reach out to Malia Rose Waters with any questions you might have. And then there's the Keep Kids Fed Act. Good news on school lunches. This act was signed into law this week and will give the U.S. Department of Agriculture the authority to provide temporary waivers that will provide flexibilities to summer and school meal programs and increase reimbursement rates in response to rising food costs. Y'all, I know that was a lot, but that is it for this week's update. So next Friday at 11 a.m., we will be bringing you the final wrap up for the 2022 legislative session with a good old fashioned Zoom meeting. So watch your inbox for the link. And as always, send me any questions you have or any issues you'd like for me to address before then. And with all of that being said, make it a great one, y'all.